Ladies and gentlemen, I'm the only one on the podium. But despite this, I wanted to display the first uh, slide here. Uh, we, are two, we are two artists working together, and I am going to tell you the story of one of our projects amongst uh, the most ambitious of our projects, um, because we have created a 100 of them. But this one is called an inter the Antarctic International Passport. But because I'm not very uh, fluent in French, I'm very sorry, but I will have to speak English now. J'ai commencé ma carrière à Paris. Started my career in Paris. Oh, sorry, I'm speaking French now. <laughs> Had led to high unemployment, and as a consequence, homelessness. I was designing beautiful clothes for the elite, but I began to question fashion and its relevance. I remember the exuberance of the Paris fashion shows and the disconnect they had with the society in deep distress. I asked myself, why spend so much on a frock? Then my encounter with Jorge, an Argentine artist who later became my husband, was a defining moment. This triggered my gradual transition away from fashion design and into contemporary art. I was inspired by his socially engaged artwork, and I felt an increasing need to become more active and to find a new creative medium that could draw more attention to the issues affecting society. Jorge and I began collaborating together, asking three questions. Can art provide more insight into the growing problems in this world? Is it possible to fuse aesthetics and social function? What contribution can artists make to social and environmental sustainability? These three questions became the heart and soul of our practice. Given the economic recession and looking at the terrible homeless situation affecting the once prosperous city of Paris, I wondered how I could provide shelter and warmth to the people in need. I met young people who had been living on the streets, and they told me their stories. And I staged performances to draw more attention to the plight. And I was invited to talk about my work in the media, and this won me for a prize for innovation. I could now see that clothing was a provocative and universal way of engaging with people. Collaborating with Jorge over the next 20 years, we experimented with all kinds of artistic mediums, drawing, painting, performance, photography, and even eating. We were very aware that the artworks we created could not just represent our complex and changing times. On the contrary, they should be active within people's lives, act as triggers for solutions for society at large. They should speak different visual languages and be accessible to diverse audiences. In 1995, Jorge was invited to represent Argentina at the Venice Biennale. The Biennale is the most important meeting event in, in the contemporary art calendar, where the most promising and avant-garde artists exhibit their work. While the sumptuous festivities were taking place in the glistening palaces along the Grand Canal, the war was ravaging in Rwanda. We were aware that our art should take on a new direction. And we imagined somehow that we could contribute to the emergence of a new community without conflict, where the frontiers become blurred and where nations can coexist more harmoniously. But in fact, our idea is not that utopian. A continent already exists, and this is Antarctica. The Antarctic Treaty, signed in 1959 by the International Community of Nations, declares this a common territory. The treaty established freedom of scientific investigation, environmental protection, whilst also banning all military activity. Since this date, Antarctica has become the veritable land of peace, a last fragile hope for a more equitable world, a continent that allows nations to coexist harmoniously. 
Because of the extreme conditions, Antarctica encourages a great international cooperation. It is a symbol of a world looking towards the future and where the immaculate whiteness contains all the wishes for humanity and a message of hope. As if they were filtered through a prism, our Antarctica Métis flag condenses all the colors of the world. Like merging light, the whiteness becomes snow and the innocence of dreams. The national identities hug each other, hand in hand. Their borders merge into one. The Métis flag is an emblem of unification, an extraordinary common identity of which we all form part of. Back in our studio, we began feverishly drawing up ideas for a place to host this new community, a true global village. We began constructing, in the style of our studio, sculptures in the form of domed tents, huts that can easily be folded and moved. On their surface, on their surface is a melting pot of nations, symbolized by the gloves and the fragments of clothing and flags. All we had to do next was find a place to pitch the Antarctic village. Well, here are some of our early digital renders of the village in situ. Quite impressive, but far from realistic, don't you agree? We decided to present these images to the curators of the End of the World Biennial, an important contemporary art event that was to take place in Ushuaia in Argentina in 2007. We knew this was as close as possible as we could get to Antarctica. And luck would have it, the enthusiastic Biennale curators decided to support our endeavor and help realize our dream. During the spring of 2007, just before the ice becomes too thick for the icebreakers and the weather conditions too extreme to travel, our team embarked on an incredible journey aboard the Hercules KC-130 on a flight to Antarctica. Here, we were finally able to stake the foundations of the first Antarctic village. And thanks to the support of the scientists and the staff of the Morambio Argentine base. Every human being has the right to move freely and cross frontiers to the chosen territory. No individual should have an inferior status to that of capital, trade, communication and pollution that, traverse, that have no boundaries and traverse all frontiers. This is an amendment 13.3 to the UN Declaration of Human Rights. It's printed on each of the flags adorning the domes. And dotted across the continent, Antarctic Village pays homage to the populations that have been forced to flee danger, be it war, political persecution, or natural or economic disaster. Nous rêvons ici à la fin du monde que nous dreaming of at the end of the world that another world is possible. This is what we dream of. To Europe. We were invited to exhibit the Antarctic Village in contemporary art museums around the world. We created new sculptures like these drop parachutes. As in many of our works, we can find an explicit reference to the tools and objects of emergency rescue missions. In this case, the model is a kind of parachute utilized by humanitarian expeditions to rapidly distribute vital supplies. But our parachutes carry a very different message such as water scarcity with the strange water utensils, or the toys to restore the lost social emotions of affection or solidarity. The lifeline resemble lifesavers, and they refer to both the physical and material rescue, and symbolically, symbolically to the spiritual needs of man. We use textiles, silkscreen print, and found utilitarian or personal objects, and these are assembled together and suspended from the handcrafted steel frames. And no country is complete without its national identity document. And so we've also imagined the Antarctica World Passport that can be delivered from the Passport Delivery Bureau. The Passport Office is constructed from reclaimed furniture and supplies we collect together in our studio. 
They remind us of the extreme post-frontier checkpoints that we've encountered along our journeys. For the first exhibition of the Antarctica in the Hangar Bicocca Contemporary Art Centre in Milan, we printed 10,000 copies of the passport, which was individually numbered, signed and stamped, declaring the right to travel freely and to become a citizen of the world. Due to the success of the Antarctica exhibitions, we've been invited to create and exhibit new passport offices throughout the world. Here in Greece, for example, the Athens Biennial, where the Greek citizens strolling along the Faliero waterfront spontaneously join the growing community. And last October, we installed a new passport office in the Jardin des Plantes in Paris for the FIAC. As you can see from the queues, it was a huge success. Queues not dissimilar to most visa, visa passport offices, you might be thinking. And many more distribution offices have been commissioned, to name but a few, the Palais Iena in Paris, the South Bank Centre in London, the European Cultural Parliament in Liverpool, MIT in Boston, etc. Then we needed to print 30,000 more copies of the passport, especially as our next tour was to China. Mobbed during the Shanghai Biennial, we sadly had to close the office due to excess requests to become a citizen of the world. With 40,000 passports in circulation today, and more and more people queuing to obtain one, it's obvious that we can no longer fumble with our archaic artistic methods, recording each citizen one by one, fastidiously signing and stamping the passport. We must innovate. We think, we hope, that social networks are the solution to our problem, and it's clear that we can unite citizens around a common cause, and we can also solicit rallies to action. Facebook, of course, is an excellent tool, but we know our citizens don't all have access to this platform. For this reason, we are very excited to announce today that we're about to launch an online passport office, thanks to a, par a partnership with Greenflex, a company that many of you will know and who are specialized in sustainable development services. This collaboration will enable us to bring together those that have already signed up and many more citizens to come in a new action against global warming, something that Antarctica knows all too well. Through the website, we can share knowledge and incite individuals and companies to make changes that limit climate change. I've requested my Antarctica World Passport because I defend Antarctica. I defend it as a world resource, as a territory that needs to be preserved from all forms of exploitation, and from climate change provoked by human activity. And I defend Antarctica as a citizen, as a human being. And I hope today that you will also request your passport. Please come and visit us. Thank you.